Hey, we're back. Long time, no see. <laughs> it's been a while, guys. Welcome back to Bible Blitz. I'm Father Michael Nixon. Father Richard Graham. And uh, guys, we're, we're, uh, we're in Lent. We're, uh, we're right now in the third week of Lent, which is crazy. And we're coming up on Laetare Sunday, this upcoming the fourth Sunday of Lent, which is amazing. Mm -hmm. um, so how's your Lent been so far, Father Richard? It's gone by pretty quickly, um, but it's been good. Yeah, I was, I was reflecting earlier today. Um, I, if you're at the Ash Wednesday Mass that I was preaching at, I was uh, speaking about Lent is very simple, but it is not easy. Um, and so I try to simplify Lent for myself this year uh, by, by diving deeper into one or two things rather than trying to do a whole multitude of things that I know I'm going to fail uh, at and then be mad at myself for. Um, so it's... Uh, those practices have been very fruitful for me so far during this season of Lent. How about you? How's yeah. Lent been for you? It, it, it's be, uh, beautiful. I was in Peru mm -hmm. um, for a week with a mission trip to Peru. We're, we're uh, As a parish, we're going to be going in December um, to Peru, which is really awesome. And uh, just beautiful work there. So that was a great experience. I was not fasting while I was there, though. We were working hard, and there was good... <laughs> Condition. I heard the food there is pretty good. The food, so. if, if you want to go, you know, for the mission trip, you know, the service and the people <laughs> and the saints in Lima are amazing. But just below all of the all of those is uh, is the food in Peru it was was really um, um, it was very very good. So that was that was a great gift. And then I'm, my my main Lenten uh, exercise is tomorrow. I'm running I'm running a marathon tomorrow. Literally running so, a marathon. So. March twenty fourth, the day before the Annunciation. So if y'all could. If you pray for me, or if it's after, if you're watching this after the 24th, still pray for me because I'm I don't know where I'll be at that point, but hopefully I'll be at mass this Sunday. Yeah, I'm gonna be in a little <laughs> car behind him, you know, just honking my horn, making sure he keeps running. So, but I'll, I'll offer it up for uh, for for everyone. Yeah. And uh, so yeah, so great readings for this weekend. So we start off with that with the entrance antiphon it says, "Rejoice, Jerusalem, and all who love her. Be joyful, all who are in mourning. Exult and be satisfied at her consoling breast." I lo I love that mm. that image of, of rejoice. We get the same thing for Ga Gaudete Sunday. In um, in Advent, on the third Sunday of Advent, we wear, wear the rose vestments like what we were in this uh, this weekend, and we're reminded to rejoice because the Lord's in Advent, the, the coming of the Lord is, is soon. But in, in uh, Lent, that we're about halfway through this time of, of fasting and prayer as we prepare for the Lord's triumph at Easter. Yeah, it's almost like the church, as a good mother, knows that sh that we need to put a little pause, right, to find you know this this Lent in this penitential season. Um, it's, it's great in leading us into the, the, the depths and the mystery of the suffering of Christ um, and to uh, repent of our own sins. Uh, but like any good mother, she knows that we need a little uh, shot in the arm, right? We need a little uh, boost of joy. And so we'll have those rose-colored vestments. Um, I think there's even prescriptions in the liturgy that allow for uh, the decorations to kind of come back, um, just to kind of give us that sense of this is where we're heading towards. This is the you know, the three uh, transcendentals of uh, beauty, truth, and goodness. Mm. Um, this is, uh, that leads us all in worship of God. And so sometimes we need a little bit of boost of that beauty, as we've seen here in our own campus of beautifying the campus. And I know the ladies have been working at the grotto. So please stop by the grotto and see the new plants out there. Yeah. It's very beautiful. Uh, we need those things in order to encounter the divine. So I see the church, like any good mother, giving us that, that reminder. And last thing before we dive into the book of Joshua is that the scaffolding is up for mm -hmm. our, our stained glass windows. So if you haven't been to church recently, I really recommend you do. There's lots of great things happening. We're hoping over these next couple of weeks for uh, the uh, the south facing window, which is the resurrection, to be installed. That was that survived the storm. Praise God, and has been mm -hmm. has been restored and uh, is is being installed. And then our north facing window, window that, that we lost, which is the Blessed Mother giving the rosary to Saint Dominic. Um, that's uh, been created by uh, by Willett Hauser and uh, will be installed again. Uh, the plan is for all that before before, before Holy Week, so over these next couple of weeks. So a lot of good things happening. So if you're looking for something to pray for during Lent, pray that all of these <laughs> projects will be completed uh, for a beautiful and holy Holy Week. Absolutely, great. So the Book of Joshua. This is a, this is a momentous moment in the history of the people of Israel. It's uh, people of Israel. It's Joshua chapter five verse nine beginning of, of, of verse nine and then verses 10 through 12 so what, what about this this scene um, uh, should we be focusing on yeah it was just you know the, the Israelites are finally entering into the the, the promised land right they uh, they're the the manna which had been given to them in the desert when they were complaining about they had nothing to eat um, you know they even complained even after they were given the manna saying to Moses it would have been better if we would uh, be back in slavery in Egypt because mm. even then we had meat. Our captors gave us meat. 
Um, and it's just like this, this reminder that we, we will constantly grumble no matter what. Um, but this manna, which was this bread from heaven that was given to them to sustain them, uh, served a purpose for a while. That's not, uh, that's, that wasn't the purpose uh, for the Israelites to eat the manna for all of eternity. Um, because when they enter into that promised land, into the land of Canaan, uh, they will be able to reap all of the fruits, all of the, all of the harvest from that land. And, and for us to always view uh, scripture, especially the Old Testament, and read that in light of Christ, um, know that even the Eucharist, which is such a beautiful gift for us, is a foretaste of what mm. we will experience in heaven. That, that that wedding banquet of the Lamb that we will be participating, hopefully, in heaven, that's the goal of life, is to, to make it to that table, um, that we won't need the Eucharist there because we will be yeah. in that beatific vision. We'll be, you know, dining of the, the most sumptuous things we could ever imagine. Um, and so while the Eucharist is such a great gift for us uh, and while the manna was such a great gift for the Israelites, um, that's only leading us towards something even greater. Absolutely. I love to just the, this, uh, the beginning, the Lord says to Joshua, which is actually the name Jesus. Mm -hmm. um, it's the same name. Joshua is Yeshua, Jesus. Yeah. Uh, which means God saves. So it's so a great prefigurement of Jesus. The figure of Joshua is fulfilled in Jesus. Um, but today the Lord says, I've removed the reproach of Egypt from you. In a sense, mm -hmm. the people were set free from slavery for 40 years, but they still carried slavery in their hearts. Yeah. So you think about this, we have people preparing for baptism at the Easter Vigil, several people, 11, 12 people that will be baptized at the Easter Vigil, mm -hmm. and that they are de definitively liberated from the power of, of the devil. If you come to the 7.45 a.m. Masses, uh, last weekend or this upcoming or the next weekend or the 1230 Spanish Mass, you'll hear the scrutinies, which is an exorcism, setting people yeah. free from the, the power of the en enemy. But even though we've been set free, on the day of your baptism, you were delivered from Satan. You were united to the cross of Jesus Christ you, with his death and resurrection. However, so often we still carry that slavery around in our hearts. We still like long for Egypt. We still right. like, we can still go back to the old habits. So Lent is a great time to allow the Lord to break mm -hmm. us of those chains of sin and death right. and the devil and uh, and uh, a great confession is a great way to do that. Yeah, with that, yeah, I went to confession this morning and it was great. Yeah, um, I went but, last night, yeah. so not to each other, but no. no. <laughs> um, but this coming week we will have our penance service here at Saint Dominic. So Monday um, from six p.m. until whenever yep. the last person is there, uh, we will have confessions available and a way to really uh, enter into that. And if you can't make it Monday, uh, Tuesday night, the next night. Uh, the penance service will be at St. John, the Evangelist yeah. Parish. So that's a great way to really continue to prepare ourselves to receive all that the Lord longs to give us uh, in these final weeks of Lent. Yeah, so this leads perfectly into our second reading from second letter of St. Paul to Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 5, 17 to 21. And he talks about all about being reconciled to God. I mean, yeah. really, really, that, that that's that's the uh, all this is from God who has reconciled us to himself through Christ and given us the ministry of reconciliation. That, yeah. that to me is always speaks to me about what the purpose of the church is for mm -hmm. that that mission, that ministry of reconciliation, of reconciling sinners to God and sinners to mm -hmm. one another as well. Yeah, and that's we're called to enact that in the world, right? We've all have experienced uh, the, the life-changing power of being forgiven, um, either in the sacrament of reconciliation or even just in a relationship, uh, having someone to proclaim those words over you, I forgive you. And that's, mm. if you haven't heard that, then that, that's a, uh, it's very powerful. And I invite you to, to seek that out, whether it's with someone that you've uh, that has wronged you in the past, or maybe you've wronged them, to speak those words of mercy out loud. There's something very powerful with that. Uh, that all that binds us is broken with that. Um, but again, we are called to be part of the ministry of reconciliation because we are ambassadors of Christ. So it's not enough just to experience that myself. I mm. have to enact that into this world. I have to let others experience that life-changing uh, transformation of of being forgiven and of God's mercy. Beautiful. And then, of course, Luke chapter 15. Um, so, I mean, maybe my, my favorite verses in, in, in the Gospels. Uh, so, so this tells one of three parables that Jesus tells in, the, in this chapter. The third one. Um, so basically the, the tax collectors, the sinners are drawing near to Jesus. The Pharisees and scribes say, this man welcomes sinners and eats with them. Mm -hmm. And then Jesus tells them these three parables. And then culminating with the parable of the prodigal father. And and I say prodigal father because prodigal means wasteful. And in a sense, yeah. like, you know, we always focus on the prodigal son who wastes everything. And then is, mm -hmm. is uh, but, you know, the father is the one who's so shockingly generous in the way he lavishes his forgiveness yeah. and, and, and everything on the son. So, so what about, there's so much we could say about this. And, there's so and, much. Something yeah. that's always stuck out to me in this passage is that when the son is still a far way off, the father runs towards mm -hmm. him. Um, and that, you know, he was kind of rehearsing this, uh, this speech the son was. 
uh, who had wasted everything. Uh, he was rehearsing the speech in his head of what's the best thing I can say to earn my father's love or to be welcomed back. And the father, before the son even gets a chance of saying anything, runs out towards him. And I've, I just kind of imagine you know, praying with this passage uh, that was probably a far distance away where the, where the house or the farmstead was maybe just a little blip, you know, where you could barely make out someone making their way mm. uh, towards the farm. And so the father, you know, we hear that he goes out and embraces him. And then we hear that he leads him into a, a, a feast that evening. We don't know. It's not written what happens in between. And so I imagine that a lot. Like when I walk out of that confessional, right? That's the time the father has embraced me. Now I have to walk with him, right? Mm-hmm. Where I have to be where he's got his arm on me, you know, on my shoulders, welcoming me back in to, to lead me back to the house. Um, but that walk with the father, that's that fruitfulness of the sacrament of reconciliation, that really the sacrament of reconciliation is beginning in the confessional, uh, but that it's supposed to go outside of that door and to allow yourself to be guided by the father back to his home. Um, and so, yeah, just sometimes what's not written in the scripture is sometimes uh, what what is some food for prayer or for thought there? Um, but again, yeah, what was that walk, that walk back to the farm like mm. for for the son yeah. and for the father? And that's the sort of thing that comes up a lot in Lexio Divina. We mm. we had our great mission preached by Father Boniface Hicks. We're still uh, during every mass uh, shorter on the on the weekday masses. Have you been doing that during the weekday masses? Um, I have not. No, I've been, I've been doing it during the weekday masses. So so an encouragement. Sorry. I've been taking two minutes on the weekday, but on Sunday taking five minutes. We're taking silence, and we've been doing after the gospel proclaimed five minutes of silence to pray through this. That's a great thing, a great example of like even where that moment kind of strikes you to say like, well, Lord, what what was that moment like? What was you know, between the Father and the Son after the reconciliation has happened before they entered into the house? Um, but it's just a great opportunity. I've been really blessed by by the time in Lexio, and the, the line I've been inviting people to uh, to pray with is my favorite line in, in all of Scripture, which is the line to the older brother. That the father says, he says, my son, you, you're here with me always and everything that I have is yours, which I yeah. think is so p- just powerful and amazing and and, uh, and beautiful. And just, mm. just to be able to, to, what if I actually believe that? What if I actually live like yeah. that? That the father loves me. I'm with him always and everything he has is mine. I mean, it, it yeah, it, it, it would change the way I live. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. So rejoice, right? Rejoice. Great, great room for rejo- rejoicing here. Absolutely, guys. Well, God bless you all. Um, thanks for, uh, for, for tuning in. Thanks for praying with the scriptures. Know that we're praying for you and hopefully we'll see you at mass this Sunday. Um, something that comes up a lot, a lot of times people see our televised 10 a.m. mass, which is our most crowded mass. So definitely, mm-hmm. you know, that, that, that's, uh, we're, we're reaching capacity there, which is wonderful. It's a very lively mass. Um, the other masses though, so sometimes people who have some hesitancy about crowds, they won't go to mass because they just see that one. But our, um, our vigil mass Saturday evenings at five and our 745 a.m. Uh, Sunday mass are, are are more manageable. Definitely, yeah. you could, if you need if you need to space out, um, you definitely have more space there. So, just a word of encouragement to come back to mass if you haven't been coming, mm. um, because uh, we, we miss you and Absolutely. and and uh, and we're not the same without you. So, for those who join us online or, or watch on TV, we love you too. We're praying for you, but um, we'll, we'll see you this Sunday. All right, God bless you guys.